let's see how we can sum every other element in a list. So here is an, an example. So we have some list and we want to take the first and the third and the fifth and so on. So every other, other element or every second element from the list. Let's write the list also here. One, two, five, six and eight. There are actually quite a lot of ways to solve this and I will just give you some examples. So uh, what we can do? Uh, we can for example use uh, indices here. So let's say we have 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So every position has an index and the first index is 0. So every, every list and every string uh, starts counting from 0. So the, the indices start from 0. And what we can do, for example, we can see that to take every other element, we can say that if the index is an uh, even number, we will take this uh, element. And in order to do that, we can use enumerate. Enumerate is a way to get the elements from list, but uh, in addition to the value of the element, you also get the index of this element. So let's uh, see what, how can it be done. So I will use for mm, a loop. And usually I would write something like that. Uh, uh, let's, let's write a list numbers here, two, five, six, eight. And I would probably do something like that for a number in numbers. And here I will just take the values of those elements. But we can use a function called enumerate. And we will uh, add the list as, a, as an argument for this function. And now instead of taking all, only the elements, we also get the index. So for every uh, cycle, I get two values. I get index and I get a number. So let's print those out. Print index and number. So, and as you can see, I get basically the same numbers as here. Uh, the first one is index, the second one is the value. And now we can basically do something similar as we would do to sum up all the even numbers. But now instead of checking whether the value is even, we just check whether the uh, index is even. So we can do something like that. If index um, uh, if the remain, reminder of uh, by when we divide this value or, or the index by two is zero, so it's it's an even number. We will sum those up. Let's say we we mm, numbers to sum. Let's use the list here. So we will add those numbers into list, and now we can uh, in the end we can. Um, we can uh, use some function, append number here, not the index, but the number. And here we can print out maybe the, all the numbers we found, and we can print out um, some of those numbers. So let's run the code. Oh no, that's, that's, that should be number here. So what happens here is that I get 1, 5 and 8 as I, as I wanted. And the sum is 14. Should be correct. Uh, that's uh, one way to do it. The other way to do it is actually to, um, let's keep this code, is to take into account that um, I, can, uh, I can use range. Range is a function which gives us basically kind of list of uh, integers. So it's basically the simplest way is to get um, consecutive numbers, may maybe from zero up to certain number. So let's see, for uh, e in range, 
10. I will just print out the E. I can keep the, this code here also. I will just ignore this the first part. So basically what happens here is that I will get numbers from 0 up to 10, but the 10 itself is not included. So basically it's 0 to 9. So this is quite good, but still it doesn't help us much. Of course, I could do so that I will just check the value of e, whether value of i, whether it's uh, uh, even or, or not, and based on that I can just some add the um, element also into a list and so on. But what we can do with with range is that we can use step here. So uh, basically, the range accepts um, three values. So the first value is a starting. Uh, value. The second one is the end value, but the end value is not included. And the third one is step. Uh, by default, the step is one. So uh, step one means that we get every element in a row. But I could use uh, step two here. So let's take from zero to ten and use step two. Now, if I print it out, I get zero, two, four, six, eight, and so on. So basically, I will get all the uh, indices I would like to sum up in the end. So, of course, the 10 is not suitable for us. We should uh, use length of the numbers. So, how many elements we have in this list. This length gives us the uh, count of those elements. And this is actually suitable for us. Because in this scenario, we will have the length of this list is 5. Then it's five, but as you can see, the range, the end of the range, is not included. So basically, it's from zero up to four. So it's convenient. We don't have to do some minus one or something like that. So that's basically a way why or why those range and then slices use them. The, the end index is not included. So it's convenient to use the uh, length here. So we can use length as a uh, end value for the range, but the end value itself is not included. So 5 would be here, which would give us maybe an error. But because the range is range in, in the range, the end is not included, we get conveniently only the numbers from 0 up to 4. And here I print out the uh, i, but I, I could actually print out. Um, number in this uh, in in this position so i take the list and add uh, i as, as the index for or the position for this for this uh, list and then now i print out all the values this is the part here all the values with certain uh, indices and now i can basically do the same that i will I will probably, for example, add those into the list and then I will sum up the list. So, for example, I will use the same list name, but I will just reset so it's an empty list. Because otherwise, if I add the elements to the same list, I would get the double value for, for, the, for the list. So, because I already ha added three elements there, now I will add the same three elements there. But uh, for now, I just created a new list, so it's a, it's empty, and now I append numbers at position y, which is now. Yeah, and now I can basically I just copy this here. I will print out the sum of those elements, and I also get fourteen, which is correct. Um, actually, this can be written even uh, sh even shorter. So um, one uh, way to do it would be to use list comprehension. This is something we will cover uh, separately, but just to give you an example, you can use list comprehension. List comprehension basically gives you a way to um, create a list in a short way. Basically, what I do, I will just uh, I use the same uh, 
variable here numbers to sum and I will create a list. But instead of creating an empty list and adding elements uh, later, I try to add the elements during creating the list. And what I can do here, I can uh, write a um, for loop basically inside the uh, list creation. And the uh, for loop is basically I can copy it for, from here. So the for loop is inside the list creation uh, brackets. And now here I could write, for example, y, uh, i here. And let's see what happens now. Print numbers to sum. That's the last thing I print out. So th this is the list here. So what happens here is that it executes the for loop here. And uh, for every cycle, I get some value. For example, currently it's only the uh, value itself. And those are appended or added to the list. So basically this for loop executes three times. And I get those uh, 0, 2 and 4 and those are put into the list. But I don't want to uh, have uh, only the value here, but I would just use the same as I did before, I will take numbers at this position. Oh, yes, the number at this position. And now I get um, a list of uh, 1, 5 and 8. So basically those are the numbers I would like to take. And now I can just write some of those, some of, the, of this um, list. Or to make it even shorter, I can write some and inside the sum, I can create this list. I don't even want, don't need, even need uh, to create the variable just because to, to kind of use it later to sum those up. And actually, uh, in certain cases, you don't even need the list itself. So I can write it as that, and this gives me 14. So I can get. Um, the sum of every second element in a list within one line of code. But actually this is not important. The important thing is that you can understand how it works, how you can get every second uh, index, and how to use it to get the elements at those positions, and how to sum those elements up. So basically if you can write the first uh, version of this code, this is this is like the minimum uh, for this course. So if you want to do, you can try to uh, use list comprehensions more, but it's not really important. The important thing here is that you understand how it works and how to put it into the code.